Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, we complete our series with the Sergeant Major of the Army. Anne Arundel County Schools offer summer lunch, the latest from MWR and more. But first, last week's Army birthday celebrations wrapped up with last weekend's Fort Meade Appreciation Day, hosted by the Bowie Bay Sox baseball team. Nearly 7,000 fans showed up, including several players from the five and six-year-old Fort Meade Cougars baseball teams. As each Bay Sox player's name was announced, they took a few of the Fort Meade kids onto the field with them. Garrison Commander Colonel Ed Rothstein stood on the visitors' dugout and administered the oath of enlistment to a group of new recruits during the middle of the second inning. So help me God. Help me God. Congratulations, home. The Third U.S. Infantry Regiments, the Old Guard, and the Fife and Drum Corps were also on hand to help celebrate the Army's 237th birthday. Elsewhere, Anne Arundel County Public Schools is expanding its free summer meal program. The goal is to serve more than 100,000 healthy meals to the young people of Anne Arundel County this summer. Seven schools are offering a free breakfast and or lunch Monday through Thursday. Meade Middle School is offering a lunch meal from 11 to noon now through August 16th. There are few restrictions. Any person between the ages of 2 and 18 can participate and there are no income or registration requirements. In other news, we conclude our series with the Sergeant Major of the Army, Raymond Chandler. During his recent visit, he addressed a variety of topics in a town hall style meeting. On last week's show, the Sergeant Major talked about the downsizing of the force and sexual assault prevention. In this edition, he addresses hazing and suicide and more on the downsizing of the force. Another scary statistic. We've had about 122 suicides so far this year. We've had about 60 soldiers die in combat this year. So more then two to one are choosing to end their life. Are all of them hazing? No, but some of them are. Some of them are. So I need your help with this. From the leadership perspective, the chief has actually provided uh, additional money through the budget process for training. You know, we're really focusing now on a lot of uh, live virtual and constructive simulations so we can get after a more iterative approach and obviously the stuff you guys do, which should always be something we need to take a look at and see how we can leverage your uh, different way of looking at things and apply it to the institutional arm. We started this week's edition with a wrap-up of the Army Birthday Week celebrations. This year's celebrations coincided with the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812 and the celebration held in the Baltimore Harbor. The Pentagon Channel was there all week with daily reports and a look at the War of 1812. Fort McHenry was just absolutely vital to the defense of our country during the War of 1812. And the Navy hosting its Fleet Week here this week is just absolutely fitting. Thousands of people are enjoying just absolutely perfect weather. Ships have been coming in and out of the harbor all day. It's been absolutely, like you said, just a buzz with activity. Now, recently, we had the chance to catch up with the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan Greenert, to get his take on some of the traditions that began during the War of 1812 that are still carried on by today's sailors. You've got to have a strong Navy if you want to be a strong economy. And that was a hard lesson we learned in the War of 1812. Let's face it, New York was blockaded, the Chesapeake Bay was blockaded, and the British sailed right up to Washington, D.C. and burned the city. So a strong Navy is necessary. But we also learned a few other things. Number one, technology really matters. We had strong, resilient ships for example, Old Ironsides, she was called Old Ironsides for a reason. It was a good ship. We had proficient and we had competent sailors who trained very hard in the War of 1812. They were the best gunners, uh, and our ships were very powerful in that regard. They could shoot straight, and they were accurate. And lastly, we had some pretty bold and confident leaders who were willing to put it on the line for the good of the country and, and get the job done. These are areas we've learned again and again since then. And they're hard lessons, but we have them today in our legacy. For the conclusion of the story and more on the War of 1812, just go to their website at www.pentagonchannel.mil. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.